Yeah, and a lot of people get a lot less than that amount. Joining us now is Anthony Falangeli, rather Falangetti. Mr. Falangetti is a criminal defense attorney who worked for 14 years in the L.A. District Attorney's Office, where he prosecuted a number of fraud cases. Thanks for coming in and talking to us. No problem. Thank you. I, I know you are innocent until proven guilty. I know the burden is on the prosecution, but there, pretty much everybody out there tonight, Anthony, wants you to tell them that these people are going to jail. Because well, that's where public opinion is, are they? I think Steve Cooley said they're going to jail. And worse yet, for Mr. Rizzo, with the number of counts against him, the scope and depth of the fraud committed in this case, Mr. Rizzo, with 53 felony counts, is looking at nearly 50 years plus in state prison and somewhere between 10 to 50 years, the DA is going to be seeking state prison time for him. So you think it's a pretty good case? Well, I mean, they, you're, you're a defense attorney now. I'm a defense so, attorney. But let's be realistic. Any defense attorney who understands his county and understands how cases go, mm -hmm. he knows that with public opinion like this, with the overwhelming media coverage that has come down on Mr. Rizzo, it's going to be hard to find 12 objective jurors so, that don't walk into a courtroom with their mind made up. All right. So what do you do? Change a venue? I move think, it up to Northern California? I think Move one, it to Nepal? <laughs> I mean, where are you going to move it? Well, for Mr. Rizzo, the first thing you do is you continue this case out as long as you can so the public starts forgetting. And then you move it out, out of this county somewhere up in Northern California, California where it's not as not as big of a deal to them. They've got their own issues up there and let them forget about this. I want to bring up something that Ed Laskos reported on. He actually talked about how uh, Randy Adams, a former police chief, he wasn't indicted, right? I shouldn't say indicted. He wasn't charged today. Uh, former or The Attorney General, Jerry Brown, he did include Randy Adams in the civil suit uh, that he announced last week. The district uh, attorney knows Mr. Adams when uh, he was in Glendale and uh, he was asked about that relationship today. I am acquainted with the former police chief. He was the longtime chief of Glendale. He was not charged because apparently there was no evidence to charge him. I would charge my mother if I had evidence against my mother. All right. Well, uh, Anthony, you've worked for Steve Cooley. I have. Do you think that there is an appearance of conflict of interest there? You're always mindful of an appearance of, of a conflict of interest when you're a DA and when you're a prosecutor. But I think in this case what's critical is two things. One, on the criminal side, if the police chief entered into a lawful contract and the city council approved it, it may be exorbitant, but it's not criminal. For Jerry Brown, on the other hand, his lawsuit's a civil matter, and he can approach this from a completely different angle and really address whether or not the police chief entered into a contract that on its face was unreasonable. All right. All right. Well, you've got a lot of city council members here. Now, a couple of them at first said, we did nothing wrong. In fact, Teresa Jacobo said, I'm going to run again. She just blatantly said, I'm staying on council. But now they've softened a little bit. Do you expect these city council members, the people who were charged with lesser counts, to flip against Rizzo? Do you expect Cooley to accept that offer if they do? Let me say this. Anytime you're dealing with this idea that someone's going to flip, testify against another co-defendant, that very well may happen. Case like this, eight defendants, here's your defense. It's somebody else. That's what we see all the time. The question is, for Mr. Rizzo, if the evidence is strong against him, if that paper trail, if the DA can conclusively mm -hmm. prove that that money came from illegitimate sources then and fraudulent contracts. he doesn't need contracts, the others, does he? He doesn't need the others. No. Now, if you're representing the other ones, you want to separate them out from Mr. Rizzo, get them as far away from the heavy as possible, and plead them as quickly and quietly as you can. But once again, as we close out, you think he's got a strong case? Well, I think very quickly. I think on this case, Mr. Cooley wouldn't have done what he did today unless they were prepared. All right. All right. Anthony Falangetti, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you.